Dr. Ashley, it's great to see you. I always love interviewing you. It's wonderful to be back. Thank you for having me. And I was particularly interested to talk to you because precision medicine is such a big deal this year. Tell me about your interaction with precision medicine. Well, it's become very exciting. It's a new term, but really what does it refer to? It refers to our ability to measure disease at a much deeper level and therefore treat it more precisely. That's the essence of precision medicine. Tell me how the new initiative for precision medicine from the White House affects your work. Well, we've uh, been thinking about precision medicine in, in many ways for, for many years. Uh, we think about disease at a very deep level, whether it's using genomics or any other omics technology. Mm -hmm. We think about measuring people using wearables, for example. And so we think about trying to subclassify disease. We think about trying to be translational and find new therapies. And so it's a very natural fit for Stanford to think about precision medicine and even to go one beyond that and to start to think about precision health. Precision health is the idea that maybe we can get to the patient before they become a patient. We're, we call ourselves a healthcare system, but a lot of the time we focus on disease, right? Right, you're right. We should think about health. We should get to the patient before they become sick. Just imagine if we could monitor people in the way that our credit cards monitor people, in the way that we work out what their normal range is, and if they go outside of the normal range, we tell them before they come to the hospital with a disease, with a problem. It's a little futuristic and scary, like everyone just being monitored all the time. Perhaps a little bit, but there's a lot of people with wearables. They go out and they buy a Fitbit or a right. Jawbone or an Apple Watch, and, and those devices are now monitoring them. But instead of monitoring just fitness, which is really important for health, imagine if they could also monitor the rhythm of your heart. Imagine if they could monitor when you have normal rhythm, when you have abnormal rhythm, and you could go see your doctor before that abnormal rhythm causes you a problem. But aren't you worried about too much noise in this? We just get useless data? Signal and noise is really important and something we're absolutely obsessed with. It's really important anytime we get a new technology, whether it's genome sequencing we talked about last year, whether it's a wearable technology that we're talking about right now, Pulling the signal from the noise is really important. We find out when the, when the data first comes, it's very noisy and we struggle with that. But if we keep at it, over time, we get better. And I truly believe that we're moving generation on generation uh, with these new devices to a point that we can use that sort of data for clinical medicine. Dr. Ashley, pleasure as always. Great to see you. Thank you for having me.